Shalom. Kaloyim Wakabah La Yahweh Bashim Yahushai Bashim Rachakwarash Shabbat Shalom. Dub honors to the elder apostles of the great millstone who rule well. Peace, blessings, and citations unto the hopeful elect tabernacle of David. It's got throughout the four corners of the earth. And I'm watching uh, Heyman Malone's Apologetics Smoke Room Live. And uh, this uh, individual here, he camped up with him. They asked him some, some questions. And I believe the topic is on, um, you know, hell, uh, the grave, you know, where you go when you die. And which we all know, you know, these Christians, uh, a lot of them got it wrong. You know, in their concept of, you know, what happens after death. Um, we know the wicked shall not understand, but the wise shall understand. So you definitely can expect for vocab to not fully understand the process. Plus the Lord, you know, he, you know, he's hid, you know, his mysteries and, and secrets from the wise and prudent of this world and, and revealed them to the babes. All right. But, uh. You know, you're going to hear him, you know, give him some answers to some of the questions that he have in which, you know, some of the answers that he's given him is, is not sound. All right. So vocab is not as wise as he profess himself to be. But let's uh, listen real quick. People ahead of you, but I do got you in the green room. So hold your spot, my friend. Uh, hold on. Let me uh, real quick. Let me adjust the audio. Hopefully there's not no echo. All right, yeah, let me play it. And then well, okay. as far so, as the, so the wicked, saying, yeah, yeah, oh, go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. As, okay, far as, as far as the wicked, I guess we might say Hades, which is going to be, you know, maybe one word to describe it, which uh, my understanding, I think, is going to be, to, for lack of a better way to put it, thrown into the lake of fire at the oh. end. So it's not the final place for the wicked either, but it's not the place you want to be. I would take but, but some like of that probably from hell, the parable, huh? Are the wicked in like hell right now, like burning or like? Well, what's see, the, it's it's the term hell in the English. It's a it's there's several Greek words, and even the Hebrew, I believe, that that get translated as hell. So it so that's why I would probably say Hades, with the end destination after a after a judgment for the wicked after with the end destination of, as a lake of fire. So I would I would want to say Hades then on to the way of the lake of fire after the judgment. Uh, okay. Yeah, but a lot of Christians teach that hell is the lake of fire where you burn forever and ever, and that's a um, that's a total misconception of, of Scripture. That's why you got to go into the original language to get the true context, and uh, it has various uh, meanings depending on the context. And uh, we know that there's a, a, a scripture in Revelation where it says that the that death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. So if you was already in hell, how could you take people in hell and cast them into uh, hell? You know, you're going you're gonna to take the grave, you're going to take hell and cast it into hell. That, that it, it wouldn't make sense. So obviously, um, you know, hell is just... Uh, the grave that's the word the word hades it, it, it goes back to shaol which means the grave or pit in which you know when we all die our bodies go into the grave or the pit but our spirit you know goes to the to the father all right so you're not in some place where you know your spirit is getting tormented and and, and you're getting uh flamed and you're, you're feeling the the, the the burns of fire and but you're going to hear uh, vocab refer to the parable of Lazarus and the rich man, which shows you he don't have understanding of that parable. Because even in that same parable, you know, uh, the Lord, um, he references uh, the rich man in, in hell. You know, he opened up his eyes in hell and torment, and he basically calls for uh, Abraham or, or uh, I forget. You know, when you go into uh, the parable to dip his uh, finger in water and, and to cool his tongue. How is that happening in the grave when your body is just there and your spirit is not in that body? And how is that if you're going to say that Haiti is a place, all right, uh, 
where you go after a uh, death, meaning your spirit, your soul. How is that happening in a spiritual place? How is your how is your spirit being on fire when your spirit is a fire? And how do you have a tongue? <laughs> how do you have a tongue? All right. In in this so-called place. And we know there's a prophecy which goes into uh, the nuclear destruction that, you know, the plague, <laughs> it's a plague where, you know, your, your eyes going to consume in your holes, your tongue co uh, shall consume in your mouth, it's going to melt in your mouth. That's not happening in a spiritual realm. But anyway, let's uh, continue to listen to the, what this guy's talking about, Haman, Haman Malone. Okay, but like like right now, if they're unrighteous, they're in a condition of suffering right now. Like, I think you could describe it that way, and I would I would draw okay. information from the the parable with the rich man. Okay, well, could I ask you what about um what is that First Samuel chapter twenty eight verse nineteen? Um, they summoned the spirit of Samuel, and he told King Saul because at this point King Saul was unrighteous, right? So Samuel told King Saul that one he's gonna die there's gonna be a war tomorrow him and his sons are gonna die and he told them that they're all gonna rest together right they're gonna all be together and another good one that i'd have yeah, to yeah ask I, I take that as say, him just saying you're gonna join me in death that's the way oh, that yeah that, he take it as you're just gonna join me in death so where where, where would he be in death what do the scriptures say happens to man after uh when you die same basic scriptures, man. Ecclesiastes 3. Start at uh, verse 20. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 20, it says, All going to one place, all are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? And like I said, all go to one place. So your body's gonna always go into one place. That's the grave. It's gonna go to where it returned. It's like where it where it came from. It's gonna return back to where it came, right? We were uh, formed of the of of the elements of the earth. We return right back into it after our spirit leaves. But where where did the scripture say our spirit goes? It goes upward. Where to? The third heaven. This, which is the spiritual realm. That's where we all go. Okay, so basically Samuel was saying, you know, tomorrow after that battle and you, you basically the Lord's going to give you over to the hand of the Philistines. Tomorrow you're going to be in a spiritual realm where I'm where I'm at. That's basically what he said. And Saul was wicked. So that means what? That the wicked are there, too. Let's go to another uh, scripture. And Satan, when you get there, if you wicked, Satan ain't up there. I right, got you hog tied, <laughs> you know, and, and 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 beating the shit out you, you know. Nah, you in the spiritual realm, and everything is in order in the spiritual realm. All right, Ecclesiastes twelve verse seven it says, "Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto the Most High who gave it." And your spirit is uh is is eternal. Because the Lord, who's the Father of Spirits, it, He He exists. So part a part of Himself can never die. So really, in retrospect, we never die. We just transition. Okay, your body just goes back into the grave. All right, and and, and if the Lord resurrects you, then your body was just at rest. You, in, until he put your spirit back in that body and raise you out of the grave. Or if you're not resurrected, you're reincarnated, which you know, vocab doesn't believe in that. A lot of Christians don't believe in it. Even certain Israelites don't believe in it, but you come back, which reincarnation just simply means back in the flesh, re meaning back, incarnate in flesh, so back in the flesh. All right. 
So <clears throat> that's basically what happens, man. All right. And you don't when you do come back, you don't remember the former things. That's also in Ecclesiastes. You know, like when uh they asked John the Baptist, was he Elijah? And he denied it. Well, that's because he 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 wouldn't know. But that didn't negate the fact that he was, in, in, in fact, the, uh, the spirit of Elijah. He was Elijah uh, coming back in the reincarnation. All right. So let's uh, go back and uh, hear a little more of this. That's okay. a way, that's the way I understand that. Okay, what about um, Job chapter 3? If you start at verse 8 on down, it speaks about um, they're the wicked, they cease from troubling, and they're the weary are at rest, right? So Job, if you read the chapter, he was speaking of, you know, he wishes he would have passed away, so he goes in to describe. Uh, and, he, and you could tell he's probably been watching the Israelites. That's why he's coming with these kind of questions and going into these scriptures, because we're the ones that go into these scriptures. All right, and, and Job, the third chapter, that's a good chapter to understand what's going on. That you even have the wicked in the same place. You're in the spiritual realm. Nobody's doing their own thing. Everybody's in order. That's basically what that's going into. And Job was basically making his complaint that why did not uh, not be stillborn? Why, why did not die from the womb? At least I would have went back to the spiritual realm and I would have been, you know, chilling. Even the wicked up there ain't doing, they ain't oppressing, they ain't doing nothing against nobody. Uh, what would have happened if he was to die from the womb, right? So it goes into describe the spiritual realm. And he says, they're the wicked, they cease from troubling, right? So wait, I'm wait, just wait, trying. Wait, Job, where'd you say though? Uh, Job chapter 3. I believe you can start at verse 8 and read on down, but it's in Let Job chapter 3. Let's start it over uh, Because it did not, no, this is about the Leviathan. Let me see. Oh, okay, 13. What, uh, for then I would have laid down and been quiet. I would have slept. Then I would have been at rest with kings and councils of the earth. So uh, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, talking about if he would have died, if he would have died in birth. Yeah. Okay. So, so he's saying that they're the wicked. They cease from troubling. And, and if you read the whole chapter, which we don't have it for the sake of time, but if you read the chapter, he's describing the spiritual realm. Well, hold on. Uh, what, 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 how, what do you think it means, though, the wicked cease from troubling? Well, from my understanding, I'd say both um, the righteous and the unrighteous, they're all at rest right now, and they're all at peace. Because if you read, um, say, for an example, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, uh, go to verse um, 20 and verse 21, it refers to this all go on to one place, right? So everybody goes to the one place. Which yes, she all. Yeah, everybody, your body goes to the grave, but your spirit, well, let me, is that, he look, it seemed like maybe he knows, I'm, you know what, now that I think about it, this dude look kind of familiar, all right, but I'm not sure what camp, you know, he belonged to, he might be actually one of us, but I'm not sure if he's, what, what camp he's in, but he look kind of familiar, but he's actually schooling vocab, all right, vocab is getting schooled right now. And vocab, because of his pride, he doesn't like to appear like he's being at school. So he's going to find a way to give his exegesis and, you know, find some kind of way to counter your your assessment. But you being in school, man. All right. Put putting the rest that Christian dogma, the, the Christian uh, mythologies and fables. Developed from uh, the Catholic Church. Well, I'd say it's a spiritual realm. They all go back to the uh, the Most High. Like, I'll give an example. If you go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7, right? When a man dies, his spirit goes back up to the Most High. From yeah, so it, it, it's the church. wicked. Another way to translate Job 317 is the wicked cease from turmoil. That's the NIV. Uh, the ESV is the wicked cease from troubling. Uh, I don't. I, I'm. I'm not sure. I'm interpreting that as they don't. They don't. They don't have trouble. They don't have turmoil. It seems like uh, one indication could be you know the wicked ain't causing no more problems. The weary are at rest. But uh, do you think the Old Testament teaches that the wicked, the wicked receive rest when they die? Dude, the scripture is plain. <laughs> 
the scripture meant exactly what it said. So now he's he <laughs> he this brother here he laid it on vocab man vocab is a little startled by that. You think the Old Testament is, dude? What did the scripture say? He quoted Ecclesiastes. I don't I don't think Job is contradicting Solomon's uh uh verse in in Ecclesiastes. All go to one place. The spirit of uh, of, of man goes upward, and the spirit of beast goes downward into the earth. So, what's upward? Is Hades upward? What what's what 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 is actually upward? Where you when your spirit goes up, where is it going to? Come on, man. But he gotta he gotta find something. All right, he gotta um. You gotta, you know, gaslight you in some way, you know, to get you to question, you know, your argument or your uh, opinion. He just can't deal with. He he just can't handle the truth. He can't accept what is, and that's how you know this man is a damn serpent, man. Well, I'd say that um, I don't subscribe to the concept that when you die. You go to hell again. I understand that when you pass away from the body, whether you're a righteous person or unrighteous. Do you think you the wicked have rest, though? Well, going by the uh, the scripture there, it looks like they're at they're at rest. Like I'll give an example in the state what of what scripture is that? If you go to John chapter eleven, verse eleven, read on down. Well, okay, um, I, I'll, I'll go there. But hold on, what I'm saying is yeah. this passage says the wicked cease from troubling, the weary are at rest. I feel like you're transposing, making the wicked also be at rest, but that's not that's not the way the line proceeds. I feel like that's what you're doing there, but I don't so, feel so like that's what it's doing. That, so, so the text doesn't say that they're the wicked; they cease from troubling. Yeah, they stop causing problems. I don't think that has to mean that they don't have any more trouble themselves. But okay, so so the wicked they're not in trouble, but they're in torment in hell then or wherever. Well, I'm saying right. I'm, I'm saying the ter the term that I think is is best to use there uh, is Hades on the way to the lake of fire, but basically it's okay. a place where so it's a place in between the, the 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 heavens and the earth where your spirit goes and it, it basically it's on standby in some secret mystical location where you you're suffering torment. How exactly? Before you go to the lake of fire, where where, where is this place? Because that would contradict Ecclesiastes uh, three and also uh, Ecclesiastes twelve and seven. Your spirit going upward. So what 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 is this guy talking about? And then even when Apostle Paul got uh, stoned to death and his his spirit went up for a little bit, where did he say he was at? He was caught up where? Go to Second Corinthians. Uh, was it twelve? Yeah, Second Corinthians twelve and one. It says, "It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Hamashiach above fourteen years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, the Most High knoweth." Such a one caught up to the third heaven. All right, and where is that at? In the spiritual realm. All right, and I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. The most I know of him. When you are in the third heaven, you're out. You're definitely out of the body. You're clear. You're clearly in in the spiritual realm. You're in another dimension. All right, because like like he also uh, reiterates in um. The uh, fifth chapter that you know when you ex when you absent from the body you're present with the Lord, and when you're absent from the Lord you're you're present in the flesh, which means you're on earth. You can't exist in two at, in two places at once, unless the Lord you know, you know opens up your eyes to that realm, you know. But for the most part, when you when you when your uh, spirit transitions from this flesh, that's the other realm you're going straight to, straight to the spiritual realm. What all the other spirits? Okay. It says, uh, 
I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell the most I know of how that he was caught up into paradise in her unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. I mean, it was very um, inexpressible, you know, describing what I what I heard and what I seen when I was, you know, up there. You know. But um, even the Lord told those uh, male factors, well, it, the one on his right that uh, repented at the last minute, you know, when when he, uh, you know, accepted the Lord. He um, the Lord basically said this day you will be with me in uh, paradise. And what, what was he what did he mean by that? That we we're, we're going to go to the, the same place. All right, the third heaven, man. OK. And the Lord is going to, you know, remember him. So he has a special place like he he that last moment he converted. OK. So vocab, he, he, he just don't he don't know, man. All right. The Lord, he, he, he didn't reveal these type of things, especially to a wicked man like like him. All right, the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand what the wise shall understand. The Lord ain't dealing with this guy. But anyway, and you can tell that these uh, his his followers, you know, they're they're lost in the sauce. They don't even know what the hell is going on. They ain't got no, and they they never post any scriptures at all. They never put no scriptures up. So yeah, man. Hey, and guess what? When 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 you when you leave this body, you're gonna go back to the spiritual realm, and you're gonna tremble at at the the the, the sight of the Lord, just like the rest of them. But when you come back. All right, you gonna you, you just like the uh <laughs> the parable of the Lazarus and the rich man, you that's when you are gonna lift up your eye in torments when you born back into this world, after uh the destruction of this place. You are gonna be in captivity if you an Edomite, which we believe you are. You are that we believe you are uh, an Amalekite. You are gonna go right into uh, you basically read Deuteronomy thirty and seven. That's gonna be the torment you are gonna be in. All right. You're going, you're going to be up under them curses. That's the torment that you're going to suffer. We're going to be in our heaven and you're going to be in hell. Because hell is not just the grave. It's also a condition. The state of uh, sorrow and, and torment. As a matter of fact, let me get this in uh, Lamentations. Lamentations 3 verse... 64 and it says uh yeah lamentations 364 says render unto them a recompense O yahweh according to the work of their hands all right reward them you know with their works that they've done against us and that's all through the scriptures man about you know recompense all right recompense and tribulation all right it says give them sorrow of heart thy curse unto them and that's, uh, you know, one of the curses that are on the Israelites, man, the sorrow of, of, of the heart or the mind. All right, you're going to be under the sorrow of mind. You're going to be in a uh, torment. When all them curses come upon you, the Lord deal with you how the Lord did to us. Because that cup is going to be passed unto you. You're going to have to drink of it. All right. That's the hill that you're going to catch. So anyway, you know, I'm going I'm to I'm stop it right there. You know, this is just a little quick response, you know, to this dialogue right here. And what she knows what he's talking about because he's an Israelite. But this dude right here, <laughs> he, he doesn't know because he's the wicked. All right. So he's going to find ways to try to gaslight, you know, your uh, your talking points. To get you question, you know, why, you know. Why you're saying or, you know, you know, question your opinion, uh, which, you know, our opinion don't come from our emotions. It comes straight from the scriptures. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to close out with that. I'm going to give all praise to y'all. Bashim Yahushai. Until the next lesson. Shalom.